Well, good morning, everyone. Jorge from Arizona. We're going to be brewing a Belgian Dubol today. It's bright and early. We're going to try to beat the sun. And one of the reasons why I like brewing Belgian beers during the summer in Arizona is that the fermentation temperatures for most Belgian beers are usually um, high. You can go up to 77, 78, maybe even push 80 degrees. So for those of us who live in really, really hot weathers, brewing beers that require or that you can ferment at higher temperatures is really good thing because our electric bills tend to stay down. So it's one of the reasons why I like brewing up Belgian beers during the summer. And for this beer, the recipe is very, very simple. It's, it's just as simple as the uh, Belgian Blonde that I brew. And that's one of the things I like about Belgian beers. Really all I have in here is 10 pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt and I have a pound of um, wheat malt. And I mean, that is essentially the, uh, the grain bill. Most of the other uh, characteristic of the beer is gonna come from candy syrup, um, D90. And for hops, I have two ounces of German Hallertau. I mean, that is essentially the uh, recipe. Um, but what's going to make this beer a little bit different is that I have a yeast starter going on. It's a two liter um, starter of um, WP500, the Trappist Ale yeast. And I'm gonna use that to start off fermentation. Now, one of the things about Belgian um, brewing is that most of their beers are usually bottled and they, they go through a re-fermentation um, in, in the bottle. Now, I'm going to be actually kegging this beer. So when I go to keg the beer, I'm going to re-ferment the beer and treat the keg as if it were a bottle, just go through a normal re-fermentation process in there. So that's the plan. Um, again, the thing about this beer is attention to detail, um, you know, temperatures become a little bit more important with this style of beer and really hitting your uh, mashing temperatures and everything else is, is really what's gonna make this beer stand out from, you know, all some of the other uh, classic styles. So let's go ahead and get started. Breakfast. So we started by adding our grains and I should also point out that normally I would use special B and maybe a little bit of crystal malt with this kind of beer, kind of like a darker one, but I'm going to be doing this mostly as an experiment, which I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video. Anyways, uh, once I add the grains, I do any uh, water adjustments and just keep in mind that I am using reverse osmosis water, which is basically distilled water and it doesn't really have any minerals. So I do have to add quite a bit of salts. So you don't really have to do a lot of salt additions if your water is not distilled or reverse osmosis like mine. Uh, but that's just what I do. And once I do my salt additions, then I go ahead and mash in. And normally when I mash in initially, I like to start out with a thick mash, just in case I need to make any uh, temperature adjustments, then I have a little bit more leeway to add more water, whether it is um, boiling water or cold water to, you know, in case I overshoot the uh, temperature. But um, it's mo mostly a precaution uh, measure. I normally hit my target temperature, so um, it's mostly a precaution. Um, once I mash in and I hit my uh, target temperature, then I go ahead and move my kettle over to my heat source, which in my case, I'm using my stove um, for the time being. And then I switch my pump from my uh, kettle with the hot water to my regular mash tun. That way I can recirculate and essentially turn this into a rims system. Now, one of the nice things about recirculating is that you can adjust your temperature. As you can see, I started a little bit low at about 144 degrees, but I went ahead and increased the uh, temperature to 149 degrees. And then I just held it there for about an hour. Now, about 15 minutes into the mash, I went ahead and checked my pH just to make sure that I am within the uh, 5.1 or 5.4 range and it all checked good. And once I was done with the mash, I went ahead and 
hooked up my pump back to my water that way I can sparge then I just started to recirculate my wart and any wart that didn't come out clear I went ahead and threw it back into the kettle until I started getting clear wart at which point I just started collecting the wart and then I transferred that back into the kettle after I got all the grains out of it and I've been using my hop filter as a filter for the wort as well which seems to be working pretty well as well now for the boil I ended up doing a 60 minute boil for this beer I got quite a bit of hot break and one of the things that I did for this beer that I normally don't do for this beer is that I did all of my hop additions at 30 minutes um, into the boil so I only boiled with the hops for 30 minutes so once I had all the hops, then went ahead and cooled the wort and I transferred to my fermenter. And then I went ahead and pitched my yeast. And the way that I fermented this beer was exactly the same as the uh, Belgian Blonde Ale. I started out at a low temperature, about 64 degrees, and about two or three days into it, I just let the temperature rise. Now, about a week and a half later, I went ahead and I transfer into the keg. Now notice that I actually am adding the uh, candy sugar into the keg and this is the part that I'm experimenting with. One of the things that I've been reading when it comes to Belgian brewing is that some brewers have used candy sugar to prime their beers in the bottle. And and so I decided to test this out in a keg. That way I can see how well the candy sugar distributes itself and you know mixes in with the rest of the beer. So you can see the beer here is pretty uh, pretty pale. It's basically got the same color as the, as the blonde. So I'm gonna check the color on this beer. It's one of the experiments. And I also wanna know exactly what flavor I'm getting from the uh, candy syrup itself because um, like I said, normally for this recipe, you'd want to use a malt like special beer or a dark crystal malt and or a dark crystal malt. So I want to see exactly what um, flavor I get from candy uh, syrup because some of the uh, uh, literature that I've been reading about Belgian brewing, they say that the candy sh uh, syrup is what gives the beer the color, but it's the dark malt that gives the beer the aroma. And I wanna think that it's the opposite. So I wanna kinda of test out this beer just with the candy syrup to see exactly what are the results that I get. And this is why I'm calling this an experimental batch. So other than that, um, you know, if, if, if you ever, um, anytime you keg, you wanna go ahead and purge out any uh, oxygen. And I'm gonna leave this beer in the keg sitting at room temperature, um, you know, probably closer to about 77 degrees and I'm gonna leave it there for about a week or so and then I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into the uh, keg to condition it for a while longer so um, that's it for now stay tuned for the review and the results of this experiment I'll let you know what I found and what I learned from this so hopefully you uh, guys will learn something from this too